Hey, welcome to this week's Rev Talk. I'm David Kellum, and uh, we're deeper into June as we head toward return of college athletics, we hope, here in just a couple of more months. And we are honored again to be joined with Keith Carter, our Vice Chancellor for Intercollegiate Athletics, our AD. And uh, we haven't had Keith in a couple of weeks, and some things have happened between the last time we talked to him. But, uh, hey, good to see everything going great with the family and the new dog that you got. Yeah, so far so good. Um, starting to become more of a member of the family, I guess. And um, I'm, I'm not having to get up too many mornings to take take her out. So that's a good thing. <laughs> it's like a new baby sometimes, isn't it? It's crazy. All right, so I want to ask you about a couple of things. First of all, uh, the Baylor opener got moved to Sunday. We kind of knew several months ago that that was a possibility, and you sort of alluded uh, to that. But just, just your thoughts on that move. What does it mean to us? Uh, from an exposure standpoint, financial standpoint, uh, we're, we're going to be the only show going that day. Yeah, probably the worst kept secret in college athletics <laughs> over the past month or so. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've known about that for a while and, and certainly wanted to try to let our fans know in, in some way, you know, that they could change their plans, mm -hmm. uh, that it was going to be a Sunday matchup rather than Saturday. But uh, with ESPN and, and different folks, we couldn't officially announce it, but hopefully. Uh, there was enough information out there that people were able to make some plans. But I think it's a, a great thing for us. You know, we, we've done this uh, at least one other time. We played a Monday night game against Florida State a few years ago that, uh, you know, that's, that's the Monday before uh, professional football starts. Obviously, this is the Sunday before professional football starts. And really, it just gives you a, a window on that Sunday to, to be the only, the only show in town. I think there is another game that day, but it's going to be earlier in the day. Um, and so, you know, for us, we felt like it made a lot of sense. Coach Kiffin felt the same. And, uh, you know, I just think it's, it's a matchup that, um, you know, we want to get the most exposure that we can out of that matchup. And obviously not having to go to school that next day, the, you know, the travel is not an issue. Um, so I think it's a good matchup. Obviously, you know, Baylor with the new coach, us with the new coach, should, there should be a lot of uh, interesting storylines along with that game. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Sunday matchup, we can give it more exposure. Yeah, no doubt. And everybody's so excited about the start. And uh, I think, you know, attention to games, Keith, from an electronic media standpoint, is going to be phenomenal in that opening weekend, too. Just so to get that special time slot, it seems like it's going to be very positive. Yeah, everybody's so ready to play. And, and obviously, we got a lot, of, a lot of things to figure out between now and then. Uh, you know, what that game looks like, how many people are going to be in the stands and, and, and all of that. But, uh, man, if we can make it to that first weekend and, and play football, I know everyone's going to be really excited. I know you guys have been monitoring nationally what's been going on with different schools as far as uh, COVID cases. And uh, I just wanted you to kind of address our situation, you know, and, and kind of what you're seeing across the country as we try to, you know, navigate through this and, and try to keep it away from us as much as possible to get ready for the fall. Yeah, you know, we're certainly following, uh, you know, things that are going on around our region, around the country. And, and I think we're in a similar boat to, to, to a lot of schools. You know, we, we have some cases, we have some folks in quarantine, um, you know, it's, it's student athletes and staff members. Um, and we knew that was going to happen. And so now, you know, we're really testing our protocols and our procedures. I think, you know, the initial wave worked really, really well. Uh, you know, the cases weren't that high. And then, you know, here, here in Oxford, there was where it was a spike, not only within our department, but, but, you know, in the, in the city, you know, there was kind of a, an event that happened that kind of caused a spike. And um, so anyway, we're, we're looking at all of that. And, and certainly, you know, the hope is that we can figure out how this works now in June and July, as we get into August and September, you know, closer to the season, you know, we have a, a plan for how all this works, but um, you know, right now we got, like I said, we've got players in quarantine and, uh, you know, if that's the same situation in the season, then you, you, you obviously have another dynamic when you're playing games. So, um, you know, we're trying to work through that. You know, again, Shannon and his team, Dr. Crowther, uh, the folks from UMMC, a lot, lot of professionals working on this to, to make sure we're doing it in a safe way. Uh, I know that, that our folks that are positive and in quarantine are getting the best care that they can get. And uh, we're certainly checking on them every day to make sure that they're continuing to do well. Uh, we do have some that are symptomatic and some that are asymptomatic, you know, so uh, we're seeing a little bit of both. But, uh, you know, just like this whole process, we're learning along the way. We're trying to do the best we can and with the information we have. But certainly as we learn things, we, we can pivot and, and be nimble. And, uh, you know, that's what we've been, we've been doing the past week or so. Yeah, it's been very interesting as to kind of follow how, how things are going. We're going to visit with Coach Matt Mott a little bit later and 
uh, I'm going to ask him about, you know, his particular sport. You're on the sidelines together and, and all those things. And it, you got to plan for those things, Keith. You've talked about that a lot, about how you, you've just looked at various scenarios. Or what if, what if we're here when we, when we start a particular season? But uh, it, it's, it's uncharted water, that's for sure. It really is. And, you know, you look at a, a sport like soccer where, you know, they're playing outdoors, the crowds aren't as big. Um, you know, you feel like that one's maybe one that you could get in and, and get going. Um, uh, then volleyball, you know, which is indoor, mm -hmm. uh, crowd's a little bit bigger, a little bit tighter. Um, so that'll be a, a, you know, a test case there to see how we can do that and how many people we can fit in and, and, and all of those things. Certainly safety coming first. And then, you know, the big one, football, you know, seeing, seeing what that looks like, what our stadiums look like. We've had a lot of discussions, you know, about uh, capacity and, and um, you know, whether that's 25%, 50%, you know, all the way up to 100%. Um, you know, we, we're looking at all those scenarios. So, uh, you know, it's not just Ole Miss. Believe me, there's a lot of schools that are scratching their head right now and, and trying to figure this thing out. But that's the beauty of it. We can all kind of talk together and work together and, uh, we're all kind of fighting for the same goal, and that's to, one, be safe and do this the right way, but then certainly, you know, get the most people we can in our, our, in our venues to enjoy Ole Miss Athletics, and, and uh, hopefully we can do that. Raising Ole Miss Athletic Director Keith Carter, and, you know, you mentioned discussions. Uh, you've seen some decisions made across the country that you look at and you kind of go, well, I don't know, that sounds like that's a little bit early to make, quote, that decision. So from a decision standpoint, you're still a little bit down the road on some of those issues? Well, that's that's kind of the catch-22 of this whole scenario is that you, you want to make decisions so you can start planning, but then you don't want to make decisions because you might have more information a week from now. And so it's like it's, you, you got to find that perfect balance of, um, you know, putting your foot on base and here's what we're going to go with and then, you know, we'll work off of that. And, and I think that would be important, you know, for our state is if we could figure out, you know, again, I've, I've referenced the governor of Texas has mentioned a couple of times that, you know, they could have up to 50% capacity in their stadiums. And so therefore, you know, those schools can kind of work off of that number. And, you know, our hope is that, you know, maybe us and Mississippi State and a few other of our state institutions can, can, you know, get in front of, you know, state officials and, and talk a little bit about our plans and what we think might work. And, uh, you know, at some point, whether that's this week or, you know, a couple of weeks from now, you know, get some guidance on, on where to work off of. And I think that would really help us. So, um, you know, again, we've had those conversations. We had a, a really good call with some of our state institutions earlier this week to kind of talk through planning and, and get on the same page and, and float ideas and those type of things. So uh, hopefully here in the next few weeks, we can uh, get some guidance and, and put our foot on base. Well, we're looking forward to finding out what those are. You, we're all impatient. You know how we are. We're, we're so impatient. But the truth of the matter is it's just a, a, a new normal, and it's, it's kind of a moving target at this point. Hey, tell us a little bit about uh, completing the contract with Coach Mike Bianco in baseball. I know uh, you've got to be really pleased that you're able to secure that and, and get ready to move forward in baseball. Yeah, I, I couldn't be more excited about uh, that new contract and, and just, you know, the, the, the prospects of working with Mike in the future. And, you know, obviously this season was, uh, was off to a great start. Felt like there was a real energy around this team and, and it had that it factor. So, you know, my hope is we can just bottle that. And, and obviously I know we we're likely to lose a couple of really good ones over on the left side of our infield. I told Coach B after the draft, I said, man, we're, we're not going to have anybody over there to catch balls. We lost our shortstop and our third baseman. Uh, but obviously we got people that can, can, can follow up and, and fill those spots. But, you know, Mike's just done such a great job. And, you know, I think it's, it's well-deserved. Um, you know, we, we've talked about, you know, the, the, the want and the, the need to get to Omaha more. And, and believe me, nobody thinks about that more than, than Coach B. And um, I have a, a really strong feeling that we're going to bust through that door in a big way here in, in short form. And wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if we don't go two or three times in, in the next 10 years. So, uh, you know, Mike is, Mike is a, a great guy, runs a great program. Uh, really, really excited about my relationship with him personally and professionally. And uh, just look forward to, you know, the next several years to see what he's going to do with this ball club. Yeah, and you mentioned the two draftees, Anthony Zavidio and uh, Tyler Keeney. It's so bittersweet, you know. But the bottom line is you want the pros in all of our sports to want our kids because that means you're being successful and you can compete at the top level. level. you got to have those – pro-type players, and Mike's had a bunch, obviously, through the year. He has, and, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of, of those guys and happy for them, um, you know, to, to be selected that high in a draft that only had five rounds. You know, I mean, th these teams were scrutinizing every pick because they knew they only had a few, 
And right. for those guys to, to get picked in the, you know, I guess, the third and the fourth round, uh, it just speaks volumes to, to them as players, as people, um, you know, of, of what those organizations feel like they can bring to them. And, uh, and all that starts with, you know, with, with our program here, you know, and kind of the way we prepare players. And, uh, you know, those guys certainly had the, 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 the skill level and, and all of that. But, you know, I think one thing that Mike and his staff do is they teach these guys how to, how to almost be pros, you know, the way they go about their, their daily routine and the way they practice and the way that they, they do things. Um, you know, our guys are prepared, you know, at, at, when they hit that minor league level and then all the way up to the big league. So um, excited for those guys. Look forward to watching their future. I'm, I'm a little upset because Tyler Keenan and I have talked about having a, a horse contest for three years now, and uh, we never got to do it. You know, he's from North Carolina and kind of fancies himself as a basketball player. Um, so we never got to do that. So maybe before he, uh, before he gets away, we can get over to the pavilion and, and knock that out. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or what, maybe when he comes back to do workouts and all, we got to get that. So I want that on tape, by the way. I think that's going to be a, no doubt. a slaughter <laughs> in, in your direction. Well, I just told him I, as, lo as long as we're not moving around, I'm happy to have a shooting contest. I just don't want to move around too much. <laughs> he probably would agree more than, more than likely. Hey, Keith, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, the, the racism and, and racial justice issue is still strong in our country. And, uh, you know, we talked about your statement a couple of weeks ago about, you know, it's great to talk about things, but we still need to make sure we're moving forward levels of action, so to speak. What's the latest in the old Miss front? Well, thank you for, for mentioning that. You know, I think for us, um, we spent the last couple of weeks more from a standpoint of, of giving our folks some time to just heal, you know, some time to kind of reflect. And then certainly some, some giving them some spaces to, to talk and have conversations and kind of raw and, and powerful conversations. It's been really, really good. Um, you know, we, we've had listening sessions with our staff. We've had listening sessions with our student athletes. Um, there's been a lot of behind the scenes work on kind of where we go from here. Um, but I think for us, it's just important that we use this opportunity to bring awareness. Um, again, I, I've said this many times, to kind of put ourselves in, in the shoes of others that maybe, you know, have a thought process that that we didn't have before mm -hmm. and so that's my challenge to myself that's our my challenge to our department is that we want to move forward in a way that um you know we we know we have things we have to work on we want to work on those things we want to create a, a culture here in Ole Miss athletics you know with our staff and our student athletes that everybody feels comfortable everybody feels equal um and everybody has a seat at the table and so you know for us it's uh, it's important that we now follow that up with action we had a meeting yesterday with a, a, a smaller committee to kind of go through some of the notes we've taken over the past few weeks, some of the conversations that we've had, uh, and really start to implement, you know, some of the things that, uh, that we want to do moving forward. But we got to continue to be intentional about it. Uh, you know, I've said it before, too, that, you know, at some point, kind of this, it'll die down some. And, and you know, once we start sports, for example, people are going to kind of get distracted. But we got to make sure, again, that we're intentional moving forward, that this is something that's important, that we're paying attention to, and that we, uh, we continue to, 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 to apply pressure and, and make sure that we're, we're doing the things we need to do here in Ole Miss Athletics to, to make some change. Oh, awesome. That's great. Hey, before I let you go, I know you're busy. I have to always talk to you too long. you got uh, stuff lined up. But uh, two guests coming up tonight, Deke Adams, who is assistant football coach, one of the biggest personalities in our state in football for, for several years, coached at all three schools, which is amazing, uh, at least USM, uh, Ole Miss and that school over there, and and Matt Mott in Ole Miss soccer, who there's a lot of excitement around that program. Yeah, Deke, uh, you know, I've, I've spent a little time with Deke. You know, this new staff, you know, it's been unfortunate for them because they haven't been here as much. They haven't gotten to know their team as much, really spend time with each other a whole lot. And, you know, for me, I haven't had a chance to spend a ton of time with the new staff. But, you know, just hear great things about Deke, his energy, um, you know, Deke is someone that, that we are going to rely on, uh, you know, to, to just do a tremendous job of, of coaching, obviously, but recruiting and, um, you know, brings just so much to the table. You, you can tell the times I've been in the room with him, he has a presence. You know, he's a guy that, that I know can walk into a living room and just wow moms and dads and kids. And um, I know that's going to be great and look forward to getting to know him better. And then Coach Mott, you know, been here a long time and been so consistent over with the soccer program. Uh, you know, what's interesting is they're, they're one of our first sports that will kick off this mm -hmm. year. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be playing before anybody, really, them in volleyball. So, I'm um, excited to, you know, I drove by the, the soccer field the other day and saw the, the young ladies out there doing their voluntary workouts and different things. But 
uh, just excited about Matt. And, you know, Matt is a, is a true rebel. He's been here a while. He understands this place and, um, you know, just a, a winner, you know. And so excited to, uh, to see what he can do with his team this year and in the future as well. Keith, thanks so much for your time. And uh, we, we hope that things continue to go in a positive direction for Ole Miss Athletics. And uh, I know that uh, you've done a wonderful job in this capacity at this point with a whole lot of things that you didn't think you'd be dealing with. But uh, it, it, it's, it's all about life and moving day to day. And hopefully good things are around the corner for Ole Miss. Yeah, no doubt. You know, there's some challenging times and, and, and certainly some times that I think we'll look back on, you know, five years from now and say, you know, it was, it was hard, it was challenging, but we, we accomplished a lot. And, and I think we have a great opportunity to do that on, on many fronts right now. And, uh, you know, I, I think everyone's ready to, to play a sport. I think everybody's just ready to get back and, and be watching something and, and playing something. And, and we're working hard for that. But uh, we appreciate everyone's patience with us. We know our fans and our donors are are ready to know something. They're ready to know when we're going to get kicked off and, and, and playing. But uh, I can assure you we're working hard on it every single day. But I appreciate the time, DK, and uh, hope, uh, hope to see you next in the next couple weeks. All right. Thank you, Keith. Hey, when we come back, we're going to be visiting with uh, Ole Miss defensive line coach, Deke Adams. That's next. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question. Would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in-store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with Smart Choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good, all right? That's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. And we do welcome you back to Rev Talk as we had a chance to visit the athletic director, Keith Carter. Got some great information. And, you know, the second segment of Rev Talk throughout the year, we've tried to use it a lot to introduce you to new coaches, and we've got a bunch of those. This may not be a, a new name to you, especially in the state of Mississippi, but we're really excited to have Deke Adams on our staff now. And, uh, Deke, good to see you, man. How you doing? Man, I'm great. I uh, appreciate it, uh, David, you guys having me. And, I mean, I, I'm excited, man. Excited to, to be in Oxford and, uh, you know, excited to get going. You know, a little bit on, on his bio, he's from Meridian, Mississippi. My mother's family, in fact, that side of the family, Meridian folks, so we got we got that okay. in common. Uh, but D-line yep. coach Mississippi State last year. 
uh, has worked at North Carolina, different place, 20 year veteran, uh, played at Southern Mississippi, was part of that nasty yeah. bunch of defense at USM. <laughs> So and coached at Southern Mississippi. So coached at Southern State and Ole Miss. There's not about four of y'all in that club, right? Uh, yeah, I know it. I know it. <laughs> I, I I started to get calls the minute uh, that I accepted this job and then got out. You know, people started to call me and, and was telling me that. <laughs> that's, that's, it's it's definitely different now. There's no doubt about it. Unique resume to say the least. But I know that <laughs> you, you obviously uh, have stayed close to the state of Mississippi in general. We we've got when you look at football in general in our state, uh, it's just amazing. High school level, the junior college yeah. group may be the best in the country, and and then of I course agree. you worked at the three D one schools. I know you got to be awfully pleased with the efforts we see out of our high school coaches and JUCO coaches in Mississippi. Yeah, you know, this is, like you said, this is home for me. And, man, it's, it's some of the best coaches in the country and the high school coaches here in the state of Mississippi. Definitely some of the best athletes in the country. Um, you know, I've had a chance to recruit junior colleges all over, and there are a lot of great junior colleges out there. But as a league, I really believe that the league here in Mississippi is, is, is elite um, and brings a, put a lot of good, great players out. And so um, it, it's really refreshing to see what the state – is doing in the game of football and what they're producing. And um, I'm just excited to be a part of it. Now, Deke's wife played basketball at Southern Mississippi. Alexis Hall, you may remember her, a thousand point club uh, club member for her. She played four years at USM in basketball, was an outstanding player. She's got two sons, uh, Jalen and Jordan. Jordan, uh, I want to talk to you about Jordan a little bit. A couple of years okay. ago in the draft, first round draft pick, what, 17th, the Los Angeles Angels uh, in baseball. And, you know, coach, you think about, uh, there's just a handful of people uh, in our country that get a chance to have a kid get drafted first round, you know, in the family yeah. experience and any of our sports. What was that like for, for not only him, but your family? I mean, it was pretty unique, you know, because, I, you know, I growing up, to be honest with you, I hated the game of baseball. Man. <laughs> it was just too slow. It was too slow for me, and I just yeah. never could get into it. Yeah. And then as my boys, my first, my oldest son, Jalen, started to play in first and he was really good at it um uh he was a pitcher and and um but he chose to go to basketball route and mm -hmm. and um and then jordan started to play in and and then it just took off and i fell in love with it uh you know but that 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 night uh, that, that night uh, in 2018 man it was great um our our, our family was just really excited cuz we'd never experienced anything like that and then to have this happened that day going into the draft, you know, we were being told, Hey, he, he, he could be uh, mid to late first round. Um, and he had already signed at that point with North Carolina mm -hmm. um, to play football and baseball. Um, and we just, you know, we, we were just sitting there and things really didn't happen. You know, I, the, the crazy part about it is different than football. I started contacting his agent midday. I was like, listen, we hadn't heard anything. What's going on? And they were like, hey, coach, hey, baseball is totally different. So we didn't really start really hearing anything until about maybe a couple of hours before the draft. And, um, and then it just took off from there. But it was unique. It was fun. And it was a great experience for us. Well, I, I, I don't want to cause any family war, but I don't know which side they get their <laughs> athletic prowess from. But uh, some of it's got to come from mama too, right? Well, uh, you don't you don't have to you won't have to worry about causing a war because I, I I will say that Mama is definitely the best athlete in the family. There's no doubt about that, and and I won't argue that. I won't argue that at all. Hey, one of the things we have in common too. A few weeks ago, you scared me to death. You did this this video about cinnamon cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> it was yeah. awesome, awesome. And if you want to go back and look at Deke's uh, timeline and Twitter. Go back and see that little video. It was so funny because it sounded like he's making some big announcement. He wanted just time to eat the cinnamon toast crunch. So we have that in common. They even now have the cinnamon toast crunch uh, coffee wow. creamer. Coffee. Yeah. yeah, wow. You know, I like I, I love cinnamon toast crunch. And you, yeah. you get through eating it, and you and you pour your milk in your coffee, and it's perfect. Now they actually sell that stuff. It's amazing. But that was That's fun. Amazing. I know you had a good time with that. Yeah, that was amazing. It was just fun. Just trying to, you know. Uh, start you know just have some good vibes on twitter and some fun and, and all that with the kids and all that and it, it i didn't i mean i never thought it would blow up the way it did and next thing you know it's like sixty thousand views on there and I mean, it was it was pretty it was pretty amazing it was fun though and the kids enjoyed it 
How did you stay in touch with your guys during the, the COVID thing? I know you're excited that they're back and they're, they're, they're yep. going through, you know, work with Wilson and all, but how did you stay in touch with them? Well, you know, I would, I would try to um, obviously call them and just check on them and make sure they're doing, you know, doing things, check on their families and all of that. But then mostly it was Zoom calls. You know, I mean, we would Zoom meet uh, two or three times a week uh, to go over uh, install because, you know, the tough part for us is we didn't get a chance to do any spring ball. Mm -hmm. So have been a new staff, bringing in a new system and trying to implement that system, it was tough. So we use everything that the NCA allowed us to do as far as the number of hours we could use. We, we tried to utilize that as much as possible because, you know, we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of learning on the run right now with our guys. And so we would Zoom meet, we would go through individual drills, we would look at film and all that stuff. And it was good. It was good. The kids really bought into it. And, you know, uh, this is the new norm, I guess, for right now. And, and, and they understand it and they know how important it is. So to give us the opportunity to be ready in the fall when, we, when it's time to play, that's what we had to do. You know, you've, your career, you've developed a lot of draft picks and just had a lot of success in the area and a very well-respected coach. And, you know, I think about um, – Jadavian Clowney, for example, what an incredible talent. I'd, I'd love to visit with you about him as an individual and what it was like, boy, seeing that guy go. What a what a great player. Well, he, he was a great kid, man. You know, that, that kid, he kind of put himself in a situation where it, it was great for him, mm -hmm. but the media kind of threw him in the spotlight of he can't be right, he can't be wrong. Um, and, and it was a situation where anything he did, anything he looked, anything that uh, ever happened with him, it would be scrutinized. And um, but, but that kid loved to play the game of football. You know, there was always questions about does he really love to play the game? You know, um, what happened in this situation? What happened? I, I, I'll say this. When he stepped between the lines, he loved to play the game of football and he was great to coach, great to be around, great personality. Um, you know, people don't, people don't even talk about the kid. I think he, he ended up, he left early. So I'm not sure if he went back to, to finish his graduation and stuff yet, but I mean, the kid had like a two seven GPA or something like that. So it wasn't, I mean, he was doing really good in the classroom. I mean, so it was just, it, it was a great experience for me and a great uh, situation to be around him. And, and I kind of got him um, as he turned into, it turned into a rock star, you know. Yeah. And, and, and it was like it, he couldn't go eat at restaurants for people bothering him. I mean, it, it was a very, very different situation. Well, you know, defensive players, especially defensive line, you go to game, you watch all these offensive guys. I mean, the wide receivers, yeah. the running yeah. backs, the quarterbacks, and you, everybody talks about it. They get all the publicity. But he was one you went to the game, I'm sure, to see what he was going to do next. Yeah, because you never knew. I mean, he was that type of an athlete that in the, in the world of, in the terms of, uh, I guess, football world, he was a freakish athlete. <laughs> and he could do things that people, a normal athlete couldn't do. And, it, and he would do things that you say, okay, no, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and it was that type of deal. And, and, and he, he was just that type of kid. He was always fun to be around. And, you know, it, it, was, it was good. I really enjoyed it. You know, you talked about not having a chance to go through spring. Talk about your room in general and, and the players that we've got. I know we got a lot of work to, to do there, try to develop some depth. It, it's one of the most – I'm going to build you up a little bit. I think it's one of the most important positions in the game, period, because you can cause so much havoc yeah. when your DL is really good. Yeah, we – you know, in my room, I, and this has been this way forever in my career, I've always put the pressure on our guys and up front. Uh, my, my philosophy is we go as a defense as we go up front. Um, if we're not very good up front, then we're not going to be very good on defense. And, and um, you know, it, it, we just have to – we have to set the tone for the way we want to play. And you're looking at uh, um, Tisdale, you're looking at Ryder Anderson, you're looking at Sam Williams, guys that are coming back that have played a lot of reps and, um, you know, it, it, it was it's tough right now to just totally say, okay, insert them into a system. You know exactly where they're going to be because, I mean, I haven't even seen the kids put a helmet on yet. So, <laughs> you know, that's all I, I've seen about four or five work. I, I've seen workouts through this deal, but we've had about three or four walkthroughs throughout this process. And, and um, it, it's just, it, it was tough 
because you don't know where they are. You can look at the film and you can say, okay, he'll be here, he'll be there. But then you have younger kids that are coming on, uh, coming on like um, uh, PJ uh, um, and then Ladarius Cox and all these different players that are coming that you don't, you know nothing about, you know, so it'll be different. It'll be unique for us. And, and what I've told the guys from the beginning is that, Hey, listen, you have to be ready when it's called because we don't have time to waste. You know, there are some people that got a chance to do spring ball, their staffs that have been there mm -hmm. and they're, they're developed and the kids understand the schemes. I said, we've got a lot working against us. I said, but here's the deal. When you line up in the fall, nobody cares about that. Nobody <laughs> cares about what you did or what you didn't do. They want to know, well, how did you use your time in the summer or how did you use your time during this quarantine to better yourself? And nobody's going to feel sorry for you if, if you if you don't um, produce. We're visiting with Deke Adams, defensive line coach at Ole Miss, who's been at multiple stops in Mississippi and around. And uh, let me ask you this about this particular staff. You've been around – some incredible mm -hmm. staffs, obviously. What attracted you to Lane Kiffin? As you look around, it's just I've talked to a bunch of them through Zoom, and I'm I'm like kind of yeah. like you guys. I had a chance to meet you up close and personal yet because of this yeah. COVID stuff. But what do you think about this staff, and and what drew you to Lane Kiffin? Well, I, I think it's a phenomenal staff. You know, we have a you know the the funny part now is I sit in the room and you know this tell you how fast things go. I sit in the room and, and I used to say, okay, wow, I'm the youngest or this and that. Now I sit in the room and I'm one of the oldest, if not the oldest guy in the room. And, and, and I'm like, man, what's really going on? But we have a great mix of, of youth and age. And, you know, and it's, it's uh, we have some very energetic coaches that get after it. And then, you know, just being around Coach Kiffin and, and learning his, um, his style of, of things and is really, really um, exciting to me. Um, you know, the biggest part of, of being wanting to be a part of his staff, I obviously knowing his history and, um, you know, the thing, the things he's been through, the championships he's been a part of, definitely want to be a part of developing that type of mentality in Oxford. But then at the same time, you know, have an opportunity to stay in state. You know, I love this state and I grew up here um, in Mississippi. I was born and raised here. Uh, you, like, like you said earlier, I went to school here, met my wife. My kids were born here in the state. I mean, it's just... It, that's what, I mean, having a, it, it was, I guess it was just a win-win situation for me. And so I'm excited to be here, excited to be a part of it. Well, hey, we look forward to it. Can't wait to get on the doggone field. And uh, hopefully, exactly. yeah. <laughs> hopefully these COVID numbers will stay down so we can get to play. Yeah. Hey, thanks yeah, so, so much, Dave. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, David. And I look forward to, uh, look forward to meeting you in person. No doubt. I've seen you on the other <laughs> sidelines a little bit. I'm glad you're on our side of the fence. That's <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Thank you very much, man. Right. Hey, we're going to continue Rev Talk, and uh, we'll do that in just a moment as we'll have uh, soccer coach Matt Mott coming up next. In sports, success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. In fact, 9 out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend Shelter to a friend. To find out how Shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice bit on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. As hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the VOT Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. 
Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at MSAAC.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. We've been deemed an essential business, so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. Our final segment of this week's uh, Rev Talk, and we're honored to have with us Rebel Head soccer coach Matt Mott, about to go into his 11th season. And, you know, been talking to all these new football coaches uh, that we've got on, on campus, and uh, we've been able to sprinkle in our head coaches as well. So it's always an honor to visit with Coach Mott and has had a tremendous success at, at Ole Miss. And I could read your bio, but it's like three pages long. So I don't <laughs> – you have success, they get longer. Have you noticed that, Matt? Uh, that's a that's a positive, I guess. That's a positive. Yeah, you you want to yeah. have a, a long resume would be good. Yeah, short bios need to be early in your career. That's for sure. They need to get. That's right. They need to get longer. Hey, great to have you. How is? Let me ask you this: the the uh, COVID shut in life with uh, Jennifer and, and the gang. Tell me about your kids. How old they are and all that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, Dean is nineteen. He is a freshman. Or he's about to be nineteen. He is you know just finished his freshman year at Ole Miss. Had a good semester. My daughter, Tacey, is uh, 16, just got her driver's license. It's funny. She Ooh. was supposed to get it, like, the day before COVID broke out. So she went, like, the three months without being able to get it, and she was going crazy. But she's got her license, so not seeing her much anymore. And then Will's my youngest. He's about to be 14 here in, a, in another week and, uh, uh, you know, big soccer and, and tennis player. And, uh, you know, they're, they're doing great. It was, uh, you know, I was telling everybody we'd see them right around lunchtime probably. You know, they'd be – sleeping in during COVID and, and they'd show up around lunch and then we wouldn't see them for a while. They'd show up around dinner. Um, and so they, uh, we got through it though. I, my wife never, I think never a million years thought she'd see me this much, uh, you know, cause we're always out recruiting in the spring. So for us being home all the time was a little crazy. Jennifer was the only restaurant open for them. So they had to come home. To <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, we did a lot of, a lot of backyard cooking. You know, I had the big cooking contest with Coach Malloy. And, yeah. Um, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. So uh, uh, Who won that, by the way? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the results are in yet, but I think it was close. I think it was close. Close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, so daughter with new driver's license, huh? Yeah, yeah, a little crazy, a little nerve-wracking, but uh, um, she's doing pretty good. I had two girls go through that myself. Did you take her like out in the county to drive or? You know, drive we, or? we hired a uh, former, former uh, Ole Miss football player, Don Walker, who was fantastic. He's, he does that for a living. Oh, cool. We hired him. It was the best, best idea we've ever had by far. Cause when I drove with her, it was so stressful and he was great. And <laughs> she loved riding with him and he loved riding with her. It couldn't have been more perfect. So big shout out to him. He was great. He's in the M club a great, great, great guy, but he, uh, he, he taught her. He uh, he, uh, he gets all the credit. So, and if I she need gets to send him a bill since he got yeah. a free plug on Rev Talk. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Let me ask you. Uh, you know, your your kids are back in. Your season's about to start too. So you're dealing with all the same things. And uh, that, of course, we've been talking to football folks a lot. But I know that before we went on, you told me that several of your players are already back, right? Yeah, we've got eight of our 21 returners back right now um i'll uh, you know most of them are all in the cleared and and they're able to train they're training with our strength coach uh they're able to get out on the field kind of doing individual stuff they can't do any you know three on three or five on five or any of that kind of scrimmaging stuff but they're able to get out there and train on our facility i think that was one of the big pluses and i, I can tell you i got to give you know keith carter and lynette johnson and and shannon singletary all those guys a ton of credit for getting our players back at a, you know, we, I think we were the first SEC team or one of the first SEC soccer teams 
to come back to campus. And it's been a huge for us to get him back, get him, you know, re-socialized and re-acclimated and, and with our strength coach, Brian Wiseman, and, you know, spending time with Corbett, our, our trainer, and getting that stuff kind of where we usually do in the summer. And it's given us, a, you know, a couple of good three weeks ahead of where we usually are. So that's been absolutely huge. And, and now we'll get the freshmen in next week and, and uh, you know, start with them. Yeah, and how is it going to change, Matt, the way you coach soccer? I mean, you I know you, you this is going into your 11th year, and, you know, you get the, the <laughs> summer workouts before things start, and everything's kind of like not necessarily cookie cutter, but, you know, you got a plan and maybe yeah. you expanded some, but how's it going to change this year? Well, I've told the players that I can still yell with a mask on. So if I got to wear a mask, it's no problem. They'll still be able to hear me. So. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. No, but, um, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting, you know, how we handle if someone gets gets positive and you know, during the season, there's a lot of question marks and kind of how this is all going to go. But, you know, we're going to be a deep team. So I think that's going to be really important that we have enough players ready to go if we do, unfortunately, have someone down with it. But it is, you know, preseason is going to be interesting. We want to make sure because they were out kind of so long that they are in good, a good spot to, to push it fitness wise because, you know, we don't want any injuries early on, certainly. And so we got to really look at all that stuff. Our periodization that we use is going to be huge to how we train and the intensity levels and the volume and all those kind of things are, are really, really important that we get that right. So when we start playing games, we're as healthy and can stay as healthy as we can during, during the season, but then also still be fit enough to be able to play in the SEC. I mean, you've got to be, it's like, as you know, Dave, we talk about it every year, it's a grind in the SEC. So we got to make sure we use those early, that early non-conference to prepare ourselves for sure. There was some early conversation about schedules might change for the fall sports that cranking it maybe shorten yada yada. As far as you know, or you just schedule as is and and go straight ahead. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, I, I'm with you. There has been a lot of talk. There's actually a number of soccer programs that are playing the the very minimum of 11 games. But right now, we're set for our, for our two exhibition games and 18 regular season games. So we're set for a full season to start. We we start training August August third, and then we uh, our first game is August twentieth. So uh, we want to kick off the season the right way and kick off. You know, we have a home game that day, so kick off the sports back at Ole Miss, and hopefully have a huge crowd and and be able to have a big tailgate before and all that kind of stuff. But so far, right now, we're we're on schedule, which is pretty exciting. Well, you know, your your core fan base is great too, and so you have created maybe unlike some other soccer programs, social distancing is going to be somewhat of an issue, I would think, for our soccer program. We've got a great fan base. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do worry about it a little bit actually, but yeah, no, we. I mean, we pack them in, and they're on top of each other, and they're loud, and it's it's a great, great atmosphere for our players, and it's great, you know, for us against the opponents. I think it's a, it's a struggle for them. I've had a lot of my. Um, you know, colleagues tell me it's a hard place to play because the fans are right there on top of you, right behind you, and they're loud and they're into it. They're soccer fans. And, you know, our, our, our fan base is, is really knowledgeable in soccer. They cheer at the right times and, and do all that kind of stuff. So, uh, no, I'm really fortunate. I, I hope we're able to have full stadium still. Yeah, no doubt. Talk a little bit about the roster. Returning players, I want to get into some of the newer players here in a moment. We have some great news today about coming to a couple of your incoming freshmen, mm -hmm. but – uh, you do have some key players coming back. Yeah, I mean, Channing Foster, you know, starts it all off. You know, she's a three-time All-SEC uh, player. She's a All-Region player. She's, you know, been with the U.S. National, or with the US national team, U23s. Um, you know, she's the leading goal scorer in the SEC coming back. Um, so she's going to be a huge piece for us in the middle. And she's done a really good job of taking on that responsibility as kind of being the, the go-to player for us offensively and, and um, so she's important. You know, Ashley Orcus is back for her second year in goal for us. Mm -hmm. She had a really good fresh, or first year, I guess you'd call it. She's a redshirt, redshirt freshman. Um, but she's doing really well. I'm excited about her. Haley Stackpole is another one in the middle that's played. She'll be a, she'll be a um, junior um, for us and, and has done a great job the first two years. Molly Martin, another senior for us that will be really important for us in midfield. And then I'll probably Sid Michael, like you talk about her as our kind of our left back has been really, really solid for us. So we have a great group of returning players, really strong five, um, five seniors. And we'll have, you know, I think it's six soft, uh, six juniors. So really kind of laden, older laden team, which is really important. And then we got some really good new guys coming up. So I'm excited about the team. Again, I think it's the deepest team we've ever had. Um, so certainly uh, excited to get going, but it, there's some, there's some depth there that we're going to need and some really good leadership and, in seniority, which I, I always say you win with a good senior class, and I think we've got a good one for sure. 
Channing coach when she got it, she was highly recruited, so everybody had high expectations for her out of the gate, and she she pretty much lived up to those, to say the least. So I, I don't know if necessarily people took her lightly early, but obviously there's going to be a focus on her, I would think, with opposing teams, especially going into this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, she, she um, you know, she saw it. She's seen it the last two years. You know, her and CC were the big uh, connection there, you know, the year before. And then, you know, last year she kind of had to, you know, carry it a little bit herself and did a good job of it, you know, and finished, I think, second in the SEC in scoring. And, um, you know, she was she was dominant all year. And, and even with all the attention she drew. So it just goes to her her ability. But she's the one of the hardest working players I've ever been around, David, honestly. she She's out there nonstop. She works super fit, works really, really hard. You know, and it's her job now to kind of bring the other players along. I've talked to her a lot about her responsibility of her legacy is – is to teach the other players what it means to be an Ole Miss soccer player and what that work rate looks like. So she's doing a great job this summer so far as, as, as everything we're, we're hearing and seeing. So we're excited about it for sure. We're busy with Matt Mott, head soccer coach at Ole Miss, and we kind of alluded to some of the new players. Boy, what a great group you've got there. In fact, announced by the university uh, the last couple of days that two of your freshmen are the Gatorade Players of the Year in their respective states. Yes, Lucy Green is uh, a Mississippi Mississippi Player of the Year, which is pretty exciting. She's going to be a defender for us, and then uh, Sydney Ham from from Tennessee is uh, right up in road in Memphis is a uh, is a Tennessee player. So that's a great honor. I mean, whenever you can be you know recognized as the the best player in your state, um, and certainly for those guys, their senior years, it's pretty special. And and they're going to be good players for us for sure. We've got a a, super, a really really strong class. We've had Price Lapasser in. You know, her her brother plays baseball, right? She mm-hmm. she's done a great job. She came in early in January, so we got to work with her a couple months before we went kind of to to lockdown. And then Ramsey Davis also came in um, in January as well. She's from Oklahoma. She's a very strong, fast forward that's going to do really really well for us. I think you know Abby Rushwin's a, a a player. It's interesting. She lived in. We saw her first in Tennessee, then she moved to Dallas. So uh, finished her kind of her high school career in Dallas, which, you know, that's really good soccer there. Mm-hmm. She's coming to work by her. And then we have two transfers, David. Um, uh, Marta uh, Santana, I can't even say her kind of middle name. She's a junior college player out of uh, Tyler, but she's from Spain. She's still in Spain. We're trying to get her to, uh, to the United States here hopefully soon this summer, but she's a really special defender. And then, uh, and then really exciting, Taylor Radecki is a, a transfer from Florida State who um, she is going to uh, – Rebel Nation going to like her. She has the longest throw maybe I've ever seen. And for a throw-in, I mean, she can throw it from the sideline into the box. So oh, wow. it's going to be a weapon we're going to use. Yeah, she's a really special player. We're excited to add her to the team from uh, from Florida State. So really good newcomers. I think Rebel Nation is going to be really excited to watch them play. They're, they're, they're really um, – you know, we've kind of got players in every position, and, and it's exciting to add us to the depth of our team for sure. Well, you, you always talk about depth when I visit with you, and it's so important. We forget about the importance of, of depth in all of our sports, and, and like you mentioned, especially in the in the SEC. Hey, I feel pretty good about us. What about the rest of the league coming in? Going to be pretty good? <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be another – it's going to be another whirlwind. It, it is. I mean, I think you've got teams all over the place. You know, Arkansas returns – they won the league last year. They returned a ton of players. Um, you know, Florida will be good again. Texas A&M, all the kind of look likely guys. South Carolina will be good. And I think everybody lost um, some good players as we typically do, but everybody just reloads and off we go again. You know, but it'll be a fun, a fun year. I'm excited for it. Um, we're hoping we're going to get everything in and and uh, be ready to go. But um, you know, I will say this, David, our administration has been just so key in 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 what we're doing here at Ole Miss, and Keith has done a great job and. But we, we really are lucky because they're they're allowing us to be be prepared the best we can, and, and that's really, really important. So I appreciate everything that, that those guys are doing for us. Yeah, no doubt. It's, it's been amazing. Shannon Singletary and his group and handling the, the return medically. Mm-hmm. It, it's been – I didn't know the relaunch of Reb Talk Coach was going to lead us down some unique paths with the, the health and well-being of our, our players. But I've learned a lot, and, boy, they have handled this – what I would call a crisis, pretty doggone good. Absolutely. Totally agree. And, you know, Shannon, Shannon, um, you know, he trained these guys over here in Gillum Center, you know, we're in the Gillum Center and, you know, we have two new staffs over here, right? Volleyball and, mm-hmm. and softball. And, you know, they've done a good job of educating us and teaching us. And I've got my mask right over here ready to go whenever I walk out my office. So 
Uh, but it's nice to be back. It's nice to be back on campus and back in our offices and starting to feel normal as much as we can a, a little bit outside of getting your temperature taken when you walk in the door or, or any of that kind of stuff. But it's nice to be back in our buildings for sure. Well, we need to do that decibel level on your yelling with the mask versus without the mask. <laughs> so we'll know how loud you need to yell with the yes. mask. On. Yes, yes. They'll, they'll be able to hear me. There's no doubt, David. No <laughs> doubt. Hey, listen, always great to visit with you. Good to see you and wish you the very best. Can't wait to get to go to a soccer match for sure. Absolutely. We're, uh, we're hoping to be out there August 20th and having a huge crowd. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, David. Matt Mott, our soccer coach. And that'll wrap up this week's Rev Talk. We'll see you next week.